So now let's take a look at an example of multiple linear regression with uh, alumni giving. So there's a handout and data file on Blackboard. So let's go to um, Blackboard under Materials, uh, Unit 3, Linear Regression. Scroll down until we get to the alumni giving problem description, and we'll be using this data file. So let's open up the problem description first. All right, so I'm not going to read this out loud to you. You can read, right? But basically, we have alumni donations for different colleges and universities. And along with that, we have some other. Um, it's not a TXT file, I made it an Excel file. 48 national universities from 2000. I don't want to get too close to today. And we have graduation rate, which is the percentage of students who initially enrolled in the university and graduated. Uh, percentage of classes under 20 shows the percentage of classes offered with fewer than 20 students. And in the column labeled student faculty ratio is the number of students enrolled divided by the total number of faculty. And then finally, the alumni giving rate percentage of alumni who made a donation to the university. So I, I came up with this, these couple of little things that we might be interested in doing. First is use methods of descriptive statistics to summarize the data. So you might want to do that, right? We, this is stuff from units one and two. So you might want to go ahead and do that. What is the average, the mean, the median, um, standard deviation, that kind of stuff of each of the columns. That wouldn't be a bad idea to do. And then the stuff that we're interested in looking at more in depth is the ones below. So number two, develop an estimated regression equation that can be used to predict the alumni giving rate given the number of students who graduate. So our input, our independent variable would be uh, percentage of students who graduate. And our output, our response variable, outcome, would be the alumni giving rate. And then there's another next one, number three, develop estimated regression equation that could be used to predict the alumni giving rate using the data provided, explain your model. So that one is much more wide open. The first one, number two, is very specific. It's telling you to do a simple linear regression, number two is. Number three is much more open-ended stuff you'd expect on the exam that I would give you. And then number four, now create dummy variables to represent the regions of the U.S. and use them in a regression model. What value does including region of the country add to your analysis? And then what conclusions, recommendations can you derive from your analysis? So five is also very, very open-ended. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's try to do this. So if we go back to here and download alumni giving rate and then open it up. Bring this guy over here. Do that. So we see the school. We have Boston College. So they look like they're in alphabetical order by their first uh, name. The state that they're in, Massachusetts, the region, Northeast. The graduation rate, 80, 85%. Percentage of classes under 20 for Boston College for BC is 39. Student faculty ratio, 13. Alumni giving rate, 25%. All right. And we got a bunch of these other ones down through here. All right. All right. So the first question was use methods of descriptive statistics to summarize the data. So we might as well go ahead and do that. All right. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll freeze the panes here so I can see what I'm doing as I scroll down. So I'm not going to really worry about state or region right now for summarizing. Um, graduation rate, maybe we want the, the mean, the median, um, let's do the standard deviation also, right? So the mean is average of all these guys, right? So average graduation rate, 83%. Since these are top schools, you would expect something like that. Uh, median uh, D2 through D49, 83 and a half. So again, they're both very similar. That doesn't surprise me at all. Standard deviation dot S of D2 through 
D49, 8.6. Right? And so I ought to be able to drag these over to all of these now. Right? Percentage of classes under 20, the average is 55%. Median is 59.5%. Wow. Standard deviation, 13.1. Student-faculty ratio is 11, 10.5. Um, standard deviation, 4.8. Alumni giving rate, 29.2729. And uh, quite a bit, big standard deviation there for the alumni giving rate. All right, so we could also plot this stuff and look at it and all that fun stuff that we did in Unit 2. For right now, it's probably not worth doing that, but, you know, you should explore that on your own, I think. So what do I want to do? So I want to go back and look at number two, develop an estimated regression equation that can be used to predict the alumni giving rate given the number of students who graduate. All right, so my independent variable is going to be just one independent variable, one x, which is the number of students who graduate, and my dependent variable, my outcome, my response variable, is the alumni giving rate. So I'm trying to predict alumni giving rate based off the number of students who graduate. So you should first stop and think, okay, um, does that, do you think that there's some kind of relationship between those two? So let's, let's actually do this. Let's uh, create, let's calculate the correlation coefficient between, so remember that C O R R E L in Excel, the graduation rate with the alumni giving rate. And remember, for correlation, um, it doesn't matter which order you put the arrays in. So correlation between graduation, grad rate, and giving rate. Right. 0.7559, so 75.75. Uh, so pretty strong positive linear correlate, linear relationship between those two. That shouldn't surprise you, right? The more students that graduate, the more alumni I have, and more than likely they'll give money, or some of them will, right? So the more alumni I have, the more students that graduate, the more I'm going to have a, a higher giving rate, my chances of that. So that makes me believe that we could do simple linear regression with this, so let's do that. So uh, we can do it several different ways. Um, we can we can do a slope and intercept to find the slope and intercept of the simple linear regression. But what I would prefer to do actually is use the under the data tab the data analysis. So this is one of the add-ins that comes with Excel that you should have loaded, and we're going to choose from the pop-up here uh, regression. Click OK. My Y range, again, that's what I'm trying to predict. It's my giving rate. All right. And I did select row 1, notice this time, G1 through G49. And my X range is my graduation rate. And again, I picked the X range, the row number 1. And I, because I did that, I check off labels. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it in a new worksheet ply. We're not going to worry about the stuff down here at the moment. We'll do that later. Uh, I click OK. And we get a new worksheet with the simple linear regression. Uh, this multiple R here looks very, very familiar. It's our correlation coefficient for a simple linear regression. Um, we get an R squared value. Remember how to interpret that, and an adjusted R squared value. So 57% of the variation in alumni giving rate for this particular data set can be explained by the graduation rate. Uh, and then we have number of observations, or 48 records, 48 schools. We have an ANOVA table, and then the coefficients down here. All right. So in the ANOVA table, I look at significance F. So make that bigger so I can see it. This tells me the overall significance of the model. This is a very, very small number, e to the negative 10. So move the decimal over 10 places to the left. So very, very small, basically 0, practically 0. So the model overall is statistically significant. 
So the intercept is negative 68.76, and then the coefficient on graduation rate is 1.18. And then to determine the statistical significance of that one particular independent variable graduation rate, we look at the p-value for that particular row. And it, again, it in a simple linear regression, actually, these two, significance f and p-value for that x variable, will be the same number for a simple linear regression. This is not the case when we move to multiple regression. So statistically, very significant. And what does the 1.18 mean? It means that for each percentage point that graduation rate goes up, I get 1.18 percentage points back for the alumni giving rate. So obviously, I'd want to have a higher graduation rate, right? So it's positive, and it's doesn't surprise me since we had a positive uh, correlation coefficient. All right, so that's number two for this guy.